just magnify his holy name in the first Sunday of the second quarter just bless the name of the Lord he's been a good God he's been a gracious God the God yesterday today and forever the one and the only true God the great I am the Prince of Peace the Lion of the tribe of Judah Jehovah Nisi is his name Jehovah Shammah the God that protects the God that preserves oh brethren open your mouth and magnify his name bless this God bless the name of the Lord thank him for your going out thank him for your coming in thank him for the food on your tables thank him for the clothes that you wear thank him for the air that you breathe oh we thank you thank you because you did not allow the enemies to rejoice over our souls thank you father thank you for 2024 camp meeting thank you for johnny mercies thank you for the outpouring thank you for the ignition thank you father glory to your name glory to your name We bless your name, O oh God. We give you praise. We give you praise. Ha Oh, blessed be to God. You know, there's this song. You are good. You are kind. I have never seen your kind. I'm devoted to your praise forever. You need you are. everything all right you make everything i'm devoted to your praise i'm devoted to your and forever to your everything you've done mount all over our bodies will never be enough but this morning we have come to say thank you we have come to say thank you thank you for the babies that we are born in this church thank you because there were no complications thank you many of us have traveled out outside of Canada and we are back safely thank you father only you can do this Thank you because we will not bury our young. Even our old ones, you will satisfy them with long years. 
Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you for the open doors. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in a new season. Just thank the Lord. Thank the Lord this morning. Kabalando Basahaya. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh. I'm devoted to your praise and forever to your name. You are good, you are kind. I have never seen your time. I'm devoted. Lord, we thank you this morning. Let your word come expressly. Let the name of Yeshua be glorified in our midst. Let your word come like never before. Let it come with so much power. Let it come with so much wisdom. Let it come with so much clarity, oh God, that even a newborn baby will understand speak through my mouth this morning like a pen of a ready writer let there be no display of the flesh on this puppy this morning let the excellency of the name of Jesus be revealed I humble myself under your mighty hand I bring repentance I make atonement by the blood of the lamb atonement over this altar over the pew by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and even as we look into the sacrifice you made for us on the cross, and as we approach the communion table, let us come before you worthy. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we give you praise. We give you praise. Blessed be to your name, O God. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Why not go ahead and shake somebody and tell them, welcome to the second quarter of the year 2024 welcome welcome we the blessings of the lord my hands are blessed we the blessings of the lord we the blessings of the lord everyone i touch everyone i touch johnny mort Let us sing it again. My hands are blessed. My hands now give somebody high five. With the blessings of the Lord. The Tell the person you are blessed. My hands are blessed. My hands are blessed. With the blessings of the Lord. With the blessings of Say. the Lord. Say, anyone I touch, anyone I touch, surely must be blessed. Surely oh. must be blessed. My hands are filled with the blessings of the Lord. Now, hold somebody, tell him that you love him. Put your hands together and praise the Lord. Come on, hold somebody, hold somebody, tell him that you love him. Put your hands together and praise the Lord. I've got the light of God in me. I've got the light of God in me. I've got the spirit of the Son of God. I've got the light of God in me. Do you got the light? I've got the light of God in me. Yes, I've got the light.
you see when the spirit of the Lord is upon my life, I will walk like David walk. Come on, leave your seat. When the spirit of the Lord is upon my life, I will walk. Let me see you walk. Walk into your breakthrough. Walk into your new job. Walk into your testimony. bless you god bless you hallelujah i bring you greetings from our senior pastor reverend david Ogwili. he personally asked me to greet dominion city london ontario and to say we have entered a new season in this season don't be afraid to place a demand to heaven Yes, don't be afraid to place a demand. Don't be afraid. And I want to thank Brand Nana. You know, for two weeks I traveled. When I was leaving, I told myself I was never going to call to say how church and I did not it was deliberate and the reason for it is when you see people that God has brought in terms of service in terms of loyalty in terms of punctuality I said I wasn't going to call but I left everything in his care I was following everything. Last Sunday was the first time I joined service online. <laughs> I was watching everything. And I want to thank you. Give me that oil. Come on, come and eat down. One of the things, if you know me very well, you know I don't play with words. I don't make careless statements. And um, I'm a man sent by God to London. I have not publicly declared anyone as my assistant pastor. But today, I confirm you. I confirm you. And I, the authority that God gave to me through our Father, I confer that same authority on you. Today, I anoint you to serve side by side with me. Pass! In the name of the Lord Jesus, can I help you? Can I clean my hand? And from Brother Nana, I will start calling you Pastor Nana from today. Thank you. And for all, all the ministry gifts, everyone that worked with you, thank you. But for your leadership, thank you. I can now go and transfer. Thank you. Please, appreciate your assistant pastor. Amen. And by virtue of that, your wife 
you are the assistant women leader. Amen. This church is almost two years old. And I've never done this. That's because we don't make careless statements. We, we watch out for the spirits of men. And when God told me, he said, I'm, I'm going to bring people that will help you. And that I found in you. Found in you. Despite everything, I watch you. You know, I watch everybody. Sometimes I may not talk. I watch everybody. I watch how people do things. I watch how people treat the things of God. That is what moves me. It's not how you treat me. It's how people treat the things of God. The sanctity of the ordinances of God. When I see people that play with hollow things, I run from them. I may laugh with you, but I don't take anything with you seriously when it comes to spiritual things. I don't. But in you, I found loyalty. I found submission. I found everything. And that's why I asked God when I was coming, when I was in the play, I said, what will I do? He said, honor a man who is due to be honored. And that's why I didn't tell you yesterday. He even came to the airport to pick me yesterday. I didn't ask for it. Him and his wife, they came. And thank you. Thank you. You know, I was talking to you about planting a church in St. Thomas. It's time. I will go. Don't worry. It's not you that will go. Yeah? You'll be here. All right? Amen. Are you glad this morning? They say I'm not looking darker. The sun was sunny. Oh, yes, it was. But I had a great time. Being under God's presence was everything to me. And of course, I um, had the opportunity one on one with Pastor David. And those words were powerful. Powerful. Trust me. I came in, I came back. Yesterday, I was just flying on the wings of the Spirit. Even when I, there was layover in Paris, I spent 11 hours there. I was just flying. And Chima, come. Give me that oil. This, this camera up there is almost $1,000. It's something I wanted the church to buy, but it went behind the church and bought it. Come. <laughs> You know, there are several things. There are several things he has done without anybody asking him. He looked around, he looks around. And if you notice the camera, if I'm jumping, he jumped with me. He went to buy the one that follows me everywhere I move. Kneel down. By God. Paul said, We are not rich, but we make men rich. Today, I don't care the family you came from. I don't care what has happened there. But today, I move you into the realms of men that speak and people will listen. For this seed you have done for the house of the Lord to be beautified, the Lord will beautify your life. I anoint you and I commission you today into the realms of millions. Prosper. In the name of Jesus. Even those who came before you will not see your back. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just lift up your hands and worship the Lord. Worship Him. This is a Kairos moment. It's a Kairos moment.
Today I'm going to be talking to Ross. If you notice, I left during the worship. The Lord asked me. There's a message I've already given the media team I was going to preach today, the power of worship, but it changed it. And I just had to do a little, um, a little put together. <laughs> I'm going to be talking to Ross today on living the crucified life. Living the crucified life. Galatians, our text today is Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. All right? Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. The crucified life. Today we are going to be approaching the communion table. It is very important that we know. That we know. You see, you see what this camera is doing? If I move, it moves. If I move further, it I hope you will not follow me home when I finish. <laughs> Amen. I bring a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. Is a message unto you. I bring. It's recorded in God's word. Hallelujah, it is only that we live and live. I have a message full of life. Hallelujah, it's a message unto you. I bring it's recorded in God's word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Look and live. My brother, lean. look to Jesus now and live. It's recorded in His Word. Hallelujah. It is only there. Okay, so the crucified life. The Bible said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I am living. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Alright? Uh, I don't know how we can get another translation. I saw Dami. Dami, ensure that they pay for the premium of this easy worship so that they get different translations. Because I wanted to read it from NLT. It says, NLT says, my old self, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So, what is the crucified life? 
You know, when the Bible told us that Jesus died in between two thieves, although one of them escaped at that die moment, one of them made it to paradise. The other one went straight to hell because his arrogance precedes him. There are people who are so arrogant to the things of God that sometimes it's even mixed with pride. You know, for example, when you, when you are in a church and they say, lift up your hands and worship God. And some people do not lift up their hands. It is arrogance. You don't yet understand what the crucified life means. Do you know why today we have many Christians? Today is Sunday. Many Christians go to church on a Sunday. But we have few followers of Christ. And I said this one time. I said, there are two different things. Two different set of people in church. We have the Christians and we have the followers. Okay. And this one is looking at me. Now, there is a difference between belief and discipleship. Believe, B E L I E F, and discipleship. So you see, those other guys who are Christians, you know, I always say it Jesus never went through everything he went through just to be known as the founder of Christianity. That was not his plan. In fact, in the book of Matthew, he gave an instruction Go ye therefore and do what? Make disciples. His goal was for disciples to be raised and not Christians. Because today, many people from church, they go and tell lies. From church, they go and commit sin. From church, they go and slander. From church, they go and steal. From church service, as they come out of the door, they start gossiping. What was he feeling like? Did you see that brother? Did you see that issue? Did you see that sister wearing Brazilian hair? What? When pastor was talking, she was even doing one shaking her hair. What was she feeling like? That's Christian. That's those are Christians. They, they, they believe. But they refuse to be disciples. Because discipleship is a choice. Now, write this down. To believe will cost you nothing. But to follow is very expensive. Believe costs you nothing. If you go to the law court today, they'll tell you, what do you believe in? Because you have to sow an oath. The Quran, the uh, Bible, many people, including those they caught as armed robbers. They'll say, bring the Bible. They'll put their hand on it. And swear. So, to believe is very cheap. But you see, to follow is very expensive. The cost of discipleship is something money cannot buy. Write this down. I believe in Christ's work for me, but discipleship of the result of his work in me. <laughs> I believe in Christ. You know, if we start declaring now, Receive all the things that Christ did for you. Everybody will scream amen. But what is the result of the work that Christ did for you on the cross? Do you go out in your place of work, in your neighborhood, everyone can attest that this person is a believer? Or you can't even invite your neighbor to church because of your character. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Do you know why Apostle Paul did not get married? It wasn't because God told him not to get married. The guy saw that he has wasted a lot of his years persecuting the church, killing believers. You know, Apostle Paul was a Christian. I hope you guys know. He thought he was doing God a service. He thought Jesus and his disciples were a rebel squad. I don't know if you know that. It wasn't like he was an unbeliever. He was going to church, but guess what? He was a, let me use the word, Christian. They prayed 
for the Messiah. The Messiah came, they knew not. So you see, you can receive everything that Jesus did for you on the cross. But what is the result of what Jesus did for you on the cross? You write this down. You are going to do many writing today. Believers consider themselves first, but disciples consider Christ first. It is this popular thing I always say, what will Christ do? You know, sometimes when people come to me to judge an issue, you know, as a pastor, people will come and say, this, this, this. The first thing I do, I, I, I always say this, I don't take sides, I take charge. Including issues with couple. I don't say, oh, madam, you were right, or guy, you were wrong, or, or guy, you were right. I don't do that. I always put myself and ask myself, what will Jesus do? They pursue the woman who committed adultery. She ran straight to Jesus. Jesus saw everything. He kept writing on the ground. And those men were waiting for what he was going to say. He said, the woman had committed adultery. And Jesus said, okay, no problem. She's here. If you know you are without sin, cast the first stone. And do you know, because it's the Holy Spirit that does the conviction. Wow, Humphrey, you look handsome this morning. I like your haircut. The same way you caught my attention, may you catch a woman's attention. Do you understand? So Jesus said, if you know you are without sin, cast the first stone. In Nigeria, they will say, now who they catch be thief? Oh, I saw plenty of thieves. Yes, these two ways, I saw plenty of thieves. And I knew that plenty and you ask yourself that transformation when will it come I told somebody I said it's going to come but guess what it's going to be an experience that we have to go to the, to the bottom and start pulling up and that is only a revival that can do that it's not a party it's not a person oh yes so some, some, some of you left many years ago you, the one you left last year is different from the one if you visit now I know what I'm saying. But that's not my issue. So, Jesus told them, if you are without sin, that's the first stone. Because it's the Holy Spirit that does the conviction. You know, when you preach to somebody, it's not in the eloquence of your words that the person's heart is changed. What they call, what we call evangelism. You know, so, you know sometimes, do you know why most of us are scared going out to evangelism, we think it's our word. We think, oh, we need to know all the scripture. No, you don't have to. Just go with John 3, 16. The Holy Spirit backs up your word and start doing the conviction. So when Jesus said to them, if you are without sin, cast the first stone, the Holy Ghost started breaking their heart. This one saw that, hey, I told lie, he dropped the stone. This one said, I, I committed adultery. He dropped the stone. I did this. He dropped the stone. So all of them dropped their stones and left. And Jesus turned to the woman. He said, woman, where is your, where are your accusers? And he told the woman, neither do I accuse you, but go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. And that's what it means. That woman moved from that go and see no more and became one of the followers. Because she was given a second chance. So there is a big and huge difference between being a Christian and being a, dis and being a disciple. Alright. Write this down. What I said last was believers consider themselves first. Disciples consider Christ first. Yes. Many of us fall into that category. Many. Be, write this down. Believers only produce no... No, believers only, bracket only, produce no perfect fruit. But disciples are known by their fruit. Christians are the ones 
who go to church 20 years, they don't have one convert in their name. I want to challenge you. How many of you can write down the name of your soul? The person that is your soul. This person is your soul. Your, your son, your daughter in the Lord. Write their name down. That you follow them up. You make sure, I told you guys, the lady that led me to Christ. The, not led me to Christ. The lady that prayed me into Christ. I, I shared with us how I got born again. But I didn't know that it was one lady who said later, she was telling me, when, when she heard I was born again, she couldn't believe it. So somehow she approached me. I was telling me some things. She said, one day I passed. Because then I used to, I, I, I lived a very, I used to plant my beard. I had long beards. I used to plant, tie it with um, rope. One, two, three. So she said, one day I passed. And the Lord told her, my hand is upon that young man. I need you to fast three days for him. And you know, when somebody say, nobody preached to me, I just got born again, I lie. Somebody prayed for you. Oh yeah, somebody prayed you into Christ. And that, that lady, she was the one person that God used to start discipling me. She would have a meeting with me. She would start discipling me. She would start teaching me, start teaching me how to pray. Do you know this today? She knows I'm a pastor. She knows I pastor a church. If she calls me today to ask me, how are you doing? I say, I say I'm fine. She said, how is the church? I say, fine. She said, it's not just fine. How are you as a, as a believer? I say, I'm fine. I say, you know I'm a pastor. I say, forget that thing. Are you still connected to Christ? She follows my soul up. You know what she said? She said, because I'm going to give an account. How many of us here? If I ask many of you, you say, I'm born again 10 years ago. Where is your fruit? Are you seeing? So, when we talk about a crucified life, it's not everybody that lives that life. Put up that text, Galatians 2 verse 20. It is no longer I. Ha! It is no longer I, Enike, that lives. The life I now live is in the faith of the Son of God as he instructs, so I obey. Write this down. Believe saves my soul, but discipleship glorifies Christ. Believe saves your soul, but discipleship glorifies Christ. Write this down also. Believers, bracket only, are not necessarily known as followers, but disciples are known as followers. When he told um, Peter, I will make you fishers of men. The next thing that the Bible said, and Peter dropped everything and followed him. You know, even after Peter followed Christ, I mean, you know that Peter also went back. Christ went back again. That same Peter denied him three times. It was the same Peter. When they were telling Jesus, everybody is saying that you are Elijah. Everybody is saying that you are one of the prophets. And Jesus turned to them and said, who do you? Because I needed to know who I'm working with. Who do you say that I am? I'm Peter. The hand of the Lord came upon him and he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And for the first time, Jesus called him and added his son name. Peter, but Jonah, for flesh and blood did not reveal this, but the Holy Spirit. A few moments later, for the Son of Man will be crucified. He will be buried. Peter said, Rebuke Jesus, you will not die. It's not possible. Jesus said to him, Get deep behind me, Satan. Now, what, what made the switch? What, what happened in between? When we get to heaven, we'll find out. But it tells you that, after the Bible said, He that think he stand, 
take heed lest you fall. Because there are so many people who think I've been born again for 20 years. I, I not no shaking. Nah, nah. The devil will just one small temptation and you're on the floor. Hallelujah. So, the last days, believers go to heaven. If they follow the tradition, do not, they don't, and the do's and the don't, they go to heaven. But guess what? Disciples are richly rewarded when they get to heaven. You know, there are many people that will go to heaven without a reward. One of these days, I will teach on the five eternal crowns. There are five eternal crowns that will be given on the day of judgment. They are all in the scripture. There are people that will not get crowns. There are some that will get papa's cap. Some will get face cap. Some, Bible said, they will be given a few stripes. You, you made it, but come, 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 turn your back. They flog them. Imagine entry heaven with band-aid. Yes. Be disciples are known by their fruit. All right. So, how do we live a crucified life? Number one is by Christ living through you. Look at that scripture. Galatians 2 verse 20. It says, my old self has been crucified. The old me has been crucified. How many of you are born again here? You're born again. You're sure you're, if anything happens now, you know you will. Listen, put your hand on everybody. There's something I always say. There are two people you can never lie to. Yourself and the Holy Spirit. You can lie to your brother. You can lie to your sister sitting close to you. You can or you know you're within yourself. So, if you know you are born again, and if rapture happens now, you will take off. Can I see your hand? Thank you. Those of you that did put up your hand, thank you for your honesty. Well, let's do this. Let's ensure that that part is covered. Right? Before we continue, lift your right hand on everybody. Put your left hand on your chest. Say, Lord Jesus, don't bother who is hearing you. This is a personal commitment and allegiance. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you this morning just as I am. I acknowledge that I have sinned against you knowingly or knowingly in thoughts, in words, in what I have done and in the things I fail to do. I ask that you forgive me erase my name from the book of death and write my name in the book of life today what's today's date the seventh day of april i publicly declare that jesus is my lord and my savior and i declare today i am born again with my heart I believe with my mouth I confess that Jesus is the Lord of my life. Thank you Jesus for your sacrifice on the cross. I am born again in Jesus name. Father I pray for everyone who made that prayer. Both those here and both those watching us online I ask that you will preserve them. None of them will be snatched out of your hand. Even as they hear the other part of this message let it sink and release the grace to be able to practicalize what we hear this morning thank you Jesus in Jesus name we pray it's a good place to clap so you see if rapture happens now we are gone when I was traveling when we enter the second heaven I was like, God, can you just show me, just show me something. Maybe, maybe an angel flying. <laughs> I was very curious. Yes, I was. And I, I don't know if it was an angel, but when I was going, so, somehow from a very distant, I saw a star. It was very far from me, so I, could, I couldn't tell. 
I saw a star. It just moved like this. I told her, I had to pay me. You know, I want to be sure. He moved again. And I said, Lord, whatever it is, as long as something moved after I prayed, thank you. But you know, I was just looking at it and I remember the scripture. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. The firmament showed his handiwork. Day unto day, they utter speech. Night unto night, they show forth knowledge. He said, there is no speech, no language where their voices are not heard. I was just looking at saying, my God. Hey, God is great, oh. Sometimes, you may not understand. Come out of your problems and look at that God. Then once you enter your problem, you are entered to crush it. You are entered to crush it. Sometimes we so magnify that problem. It now looks bigger than the God that we serve. It's not. Amen. So, the first way is allowing Christ to live through your life. This begins with a crucified will. That's what many of us have problem. This begins with a crucified will. The will must be sacrificed daily. 1 Corinthians 15, 31. The will... You see, there was one thing God gave to man that God himself can never temper with. It is the will. The, it's called the willpower. I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our, our Lord. I do what? I die daily. You cannot faithfully serve God by being alive in the flesh. I die daily. Your will must be sacrificed. S sacrificed. Sacrificed. Yes. Sorry, I, I, I wasn't raised with English. So no. I went to my, my primary school was Edogbolo. Secondary school, Edogbolo. So ain't you here, please. Just listen to the word of God. <laughs> Amen. So he said, I die daily. This is the secret to living a crucified life. Where nothing troubles you. Nothing bothers you. When you are in the midst of people gossiping, your body starts itching you. You can't stay. You can't stand. When you are in the midst of people saying rubbish, you can't stay with them. I, I don't have friends who sit around and talk about girls. It's not possible. Not because I'm a pastor. There are people who are pastors who do those things. I don't sit around people with filthy words. Because I've made up my mind to live and to serve this God who has preserved me. So you see, your will, that will, many people today are rebellious to spiritual authority is the will. The will is not sacrificed. The will is alive. Many people today are not paying tight. It's not because of anything. It is the will. The will is alive. The person is alive. Paul said, I die daily. When, he, when I wake up in the morning, there's a prayer Pastor David taught us to pray. Anytime you notice there is this struggle between you and the things of God, just say, Lord, I humble myself under your mighty hand. There are times, even as a human, sometimes I feel so overwhelmed. I say, Lord, I humble myself under your mighty hand. Break me. Mold me. Fix me. Then use me. If you don't pass through those three processes, break, mold, fix, God can never use you. There's a book. It's called The Making of the Man that God Uses. There are processes. You know, some people will say, Oh God, use me. I want to be among those men you will use. God will look around you. Your submission is X. Loyalty is X. There are people who come to church. They do everything in church. But guess what? They are not submissive to anybody. They have their own will. There are some, even as you are talking to them, they are listening to you, but what they want to do has already been concluded. So you see, the first in Christ living through you is the will. Because even if, if that will 
See, I'm reading from HCSB translation. That First Corinthians 15 verse 31. He said, I affirm by the pride in you that I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die every day. Every day I die. And do you know what it means? When you die every day, sin becomes something that is repulsive to you. But when this flesh is alive, it's like this. Break me, break me, break me, break me, break me, break me, never let me recover from the breaking of your spirit, never let me recover from the breaking of your spirit. That is one of the greatest prayer anybody can pray. God is not selective in who he wants to use. But the problem God has with many of us is the willpower. And one, one thing God will never tamper with is your will. Because the moment God tampers with your will, that means we are all robots. Just like this artificial intelligence, they tell the robot what to do. Somebody was asking me one day, why? The person said, was trying to argue with me about salvation. He said, why did God create human? When God knew that human was going to sin and fall. And I asked the person, why do you give birth to children and you buy, those of you that have stairs, and you buy protector so that they don't fall? Do you just go and push them to fall? You put it there, paraventure, the child plays one day. And I said, let me know why, that, why this thing goes down. That's what happens. When Adam and Eve sinned, it wasn't like the, the, the person was saying, oh, what he was saying to him, it made sense to him until I gave him some natural illustrations. I said, Have you ever heard that a car killed somebody? There was a plane car. I said, Yes. I said, do you fly? He said, Yes. I said, Why do you fly? There was a plane crash. Why do you fly? Why do you still drive when people die of accidents? So when God created human, God gave us what is called a free will. And if that will is not submitted on the altar, your Christian life will be a struggle. Including many of us looking at me right now. The reason why sometimes it looks like you are struggling to serve God, you are struggling to live a holy life, is the will. Your will is very strong. And God will never talk. Until God breaks the will. What God did to Paul when Jesus closed his eyes. And I, because nobody would have converted Saul when he was Saul. Nobody. He wasn't ready. In fact, he was going to Damascus to get an order of mass massacre. He took Jesus. There's a, there's a, a, a prophet in Nigeria called Prophet Isa Ebuba. How many of you know him? It was only Jesus who could convert him because he was one of those people who were championing jihadi in Nigeria. In fact, he, he was among those that attacked Hag Bishop Bidaosa one time. He, he says it. Jesus appeared to him. Today, he's in the north. He refused to leave the north. He's converting Muslims in their numbers. And I love this. He said, I, I can't say online because we are, we are streaming. The first thing Jesus did when Jesus appeared to him, took him somewhere. I'll leave it there. So there are people like that. And left the rest. He told Saul, You will get to the city. There's a man called Ananias. This same Saul stayed under 
mentorship under guidance put up for me Acts chapter 13 verse 1 to 3 this same saw God was watching him even when Ananias prayed with him and Jesus opened his eyes the guy entered mentorship look at it now at they were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers and Barnabas and Simeon that was called Nije and Lucius of Cyrene and Mane which had been brought up by Herod the Tetrat and Saul look at what happened verse 2 he said as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said not to Saul separate for me Barnabas and Saul for the work where unto I have called them today some people because they heard from God they are not Jews Say, pray for, for me. And verse 3. Even when God spoke, the priest still waited. And when they had finished the fasting and prayer, they laid hands on them and they sent them away. That's why Paul succeeded. That Jesus appeared to him was not a criteria for him to succeed. He needed to follow, to bring down his will to submission. Many of us here, there's a lady here. God has given you a gift of music ministry. But your problem has been lack of submission. I'm seeing the picture of the lady. He's not here, don't worry. She's not yet in the, she's not in the choir. She's in the congregation. The problem has been submission. Some God give you, God gives you a gift of intercession. You because you can pray and you can see vision. You think nobody can pastor you? Will and that's why sometimes it looks like you are stagnant. The crucified life is the solution. You see, when I traveled. This is not my church. It is God's church. I'm just privileged to lead. So when I left, he stepped in. I didn't call him for once. Ask him, is here. I didn't call him once. Ah, man of God, how is church? I did not. There were even some activities I was not able to join because of network problem. It's not my church. If you come to church because you like Pastor Nikki, I like you too. But we are running two different ways. Oh, yes. Don't go to a church because you like the pastor. Go to a church because God's word comes from that church. How do you even know a church that God builds is when one man is not a superstar? Jesus alone is a superstar then he has a lot of celebrities around him. But where one man is a superstar? I don't know. No. Then you call, tell, call me when you are traveling. Call me to dedicate your house. Then I'm making myself a God. Robbing my own self of the blessing. I'm, not, I'm also a servant who goes to God every day. Lord, help me. Hallelujah. Alright, so you must die to self-will that Christ might live through you. You must seek his will continually. Because how do you even die to your will? It's by seeking his will. He said, my will is to do, my meat is to do the will of he that sent me. You know there's something we always say in, in, in this church? We are not what? We are not regular immigrants. We are not among the Jackpapians. 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 We are not. We are missionaries on assignment. That's why our feet are planted on this land. Everything we do prospers. Not because we are special than anybody, just because we know our identity. We know why we are here. We know why God called us here. We have laid down our will for his will. God needed help 
in, in the city of London. He saw all of us and exported us. The same way he brought, do you know that because of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the constitution of Babylon was changed. Was altered. Twice. Not even once. Twice. Why can't it happen here? Yesterday, I was traveling. Even when I was going, when I was coming, I noticed that a lot of Indians are working as immigration officers. And I say, I'm going to encourage us. Once you become peer or citizen, please look into government jobs. Stop. Let's stop dragging this PSW and this business analyst. Yes, let's stop dragging them. These guys are strategically entry. Not just here, even in, even in France. These guys are everywhere. So, I was telling them yesterday when I came to Big Mercy, it's part of what I saw. So, please, start entry. Even if it's IT, join the, F, join the uh, military. Join the cyber security side. We are dragging one particular circle. That's because the people that we, that we met here have made us to feel that this is the only profession. No. I'm glad. I'm glad you are working with the government. Let's, uh, every one of us, enter. Plug head. You cannot have dominion if you are outside the court. Oh. When they make a decision. Do you know that to apply for Nigerian visa is like two years? Why India is two weeks? Oh, two weeks. I love them also. Don't think I'm talking because I hate them. No, I'm, they are very strategic. Two weeks processing time. You, two years. Why? We are all dragging one area. Business a, 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 analysis. Now, DevOps engineer. PSW. You see, that's where. No, those things are good, but look beyond. Eh? Remember what I told you? Taiwo, go into politics. Become an MP. I'm telling you, those of you that have political grace, you feel it. Don't be afraid. Start preparing for it. Have dominion. Don't come and stay, come to Canada and go and stay by the edge. Stay in the middle. So that when they are sharing the big cake, you can say no on behalf of my people. Yes. Amen. Ah. There are so many things when your will is taken. There are examples. Number one, once your will is laid down on the altar, the first thing that happens is that you become a witness. Examples of crucified will is witnessing. Act chapter 1 verse 8. Act 1 verse 8. Listen, if you do not obey Act 1 verse 8, Act 8 verse 1 will happen to you. It happened to everybody. It happened in the past. It, 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 it keeps happening. Look at Act chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Canada no, let me start. Both in London and in all Ontario and in all of Canada and to the utmost part of the earth. That's why you see, we focus, even our prayer, we focus on London. There's a reason for that. And ladies and gentlemen, we are going to present this city to Christ. Oh, we will carry it and present to Jesus. Say, so we deliver it to you. Now look at Acts chapter 8 verse 1. Because if you don't obey Act 1 8, Act 8 1 will happen. Look at it. Act 8 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against what? The church. Which was at Jerusalem. And they were all what? Scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judah. You see, that same place they refused to evangelize in Act 1 8 is that same place that has scattered them from. Hallelujah. So you must understand that as a follower of Christ, you are in a battlefield. 
The devil is content. Every time you hear us say, oh, we are going to take over London for Jesus, the devil on his own side is also saying that he will take over this land. He will push young people into drugs. Raise up a lot of prostitution in the city. But thank God that we are here. Can everybody say amen? There are some of us in this church that pray every day and we are not going to stop until London cracks. One hour every night, 11 to 12, about 14 of us will be doing it now for months. If you want to join us, join us. Normally, I told them I was not going to make it open, but I just feel led. Join us to pray for this city. We're not praying for your need. We're not praying for your job. Just know now, if you want to join, we are praying for this city that the, 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 the glory of the earth will fill the city as the waters cover the sea. The Bible says, so mightily grew the word of God and it permeates into a society. Hallelujah. So as you come to the communion table, there are two people that died on the cross. It was not just Jesus. It was me and him. It was you and him. So therefore, say after me, I am crucified with Christ. Though I am alive, this life I now live is the life of Christ. I don't live for myself. Alright? So, just, I'll close here. Witnessing. Number two, example is prayers. You become a man that prays. First Thessalonians 5 verse 17. Never stop praying. Never stop praying. Don't pray because you are in trouble because you are already in trouble. Look at it. Pray without what? Season. Don't say you only pray when, when pastor calls for prayer. Number three, studying of the, of the word of God. Once your will is crucified, studying the Bible will not be a problem. Thank God for different Bible plans. Join one of those Bible plans. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Studying. He said, Work hard so that you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker. One who does not need to be ashamed and who can correctly explain the word of God. King James will say, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed but rightly dividing the word of truth. Do you know why most times people will tell you, I can't preach because I don't know the scripture? Is because they don't study. Study. God even said, if you reject knowledge, I, the Lord, will reject you. So, Paul was saying here, he was telling Timothy, his son, he said, study to show yourself up. Because if you don't study, imagine I stand here every Sunday, I preach the same message. Will you come next Sunday? You will not come, you get tired. Study to show yourself approved. Once you are approved of God, men will start listening to you. Hallelujah. So, the next one is stewardship. Be a steward. Malachi 3 verse 10. Be a steward. Know that everything God has given to you is not yours. You are not about the steward. Including your children. Including your children. You will give, you will give account. How they turn out tomorrow, you will give account. Look at it. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now. This is issue of money where many people hold. Stop paying your tithes. You're not doing it because the church needs it. You are doing it because you understand your role as a steward. The next one is worship. Hebrews 10 verse 25. You must understand every time you come before God, you are about to worship the creator of the heavens and the earth. Is not You are not worshiping your father. You are not worshiping your uncle. You have come before the creator. You must know. He said not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is. But what? Exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Hold the person next to you. Just 
hold the person's hand. Say, I'm glad you're in church today. If the person is not smiling, leave the person. Hold the person. Smile. Look at the person's face. Say, I'm glad you're in church today. You must learn to understand. We worship. That's why you see every Sunday morning, I put that post. Let us, I am glad when they say, let us go to the house of the Lord. I am glad. Hallelujah. Then, the next is love. No, I called Hebrews. Okay, I've read it. Love. Love one another. Love one another. Don't be, a, don't, don't allow your love to be selective. How many of you are worshiping with us today for the first time? Today is your first Sunday here. Can I see your hand? Today is your first Sunday. Please, can you rise? Can you rise, please? Just, just want to do something. You know, one of the things God has blessed us with in this church is love. Am I? Do I have those agree? Please stand, stand up, please. Your first time. Please. Let's, let's show them love. Stand up on your feet and show them love. Show them love. Show them love. You're welcome to Dominion City. This is the home of champions. Where we love everybody and anybody. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't love you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to Those chairmen at the back, why are you not showing love? Stand up and come and show love. It is his will that every need be so. Why important to us? We need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't hold you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Please, let's clap for them for what you do with us today. There's going to be a former welcoming session, but well, this is just to let you know that you are in a place of love. You may be seated. You are in a place of love. And what we always say is, give us three months, just three months. Get to know us. Allow us to know you for three months. And if nothing happens, don't believe whatever you hear again. But I can tell you, do I have witness of that here? There is no gossip in our midst. There is no tribalism in our midst. We are not from any tribe. We are from Zion. We are one family. If ask anybody here, if anybody is moving house, you don't hire truck. You don't hire people. We move your house. Me myself, I go. We move. Somebody is pregnant. We are all pregnant. Hallelujah! You are welcome. This is Dominion City, London, Ontario. We have six branches in Canada presently, and. Over 3,200 branches all over the world. You are welcome to the place where God dwells. Hallelujah. Please, can you open this up as we go to the communion table? It is His way that every need is supplied. You are important to On the night before he was arrested, he took bread and he broke it. 
He said, this is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we ask that you bless this bread as it represents your body. Because your body was broken, let every broken part of our bodies be mended today. As we approach the communion table, let there be healing. Let this word grow in the hearts of men. Take away every stony heart and give or replace with a heart of flesh in the name of the Lord Jesus. All the leaders, please come. Come fast. Where is Jerry? And in the same manner, he took the wine. He said, this is my blood of the new covenant that is shed for you. Take it as often as you will. Father, we lift up this wine. We bless it as it becomes the blood of Jesus. As we partake of this this morning, let there be a total overhaul of any blood disease, any sickness, any infirmity in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because your blood was shed, not just for the remissions of our sin, but for deliverance, we ask that you will do a quick walk in us, O God, in Jesus' name. Broken for you. Once they come to you, just take the communion and you can begin to pray. If you are sick, you will be healed this morning. This is my body. First Sunday is our communion and anointing service. So we're going to anoint this oil. You will just come out, touch it by yourself, and always be very careful who put hand who put hand on your head. Be very careful. Make sure that you are spiritually discerned. All right. So we lay hands on people, but just for those who are coming for the first time, you can just call anybody, touch it, and you know, anoint yourself. Father, we lift up this oil as it becomes an anointed oil as we put this oil on our body Paul said let no man disturb me for I bear in my body the mark of Christ 
let this oil serve as a mark in our body this morning in our children that this month of april will be a month of protection a month of provision and as we anoint ourselves with this oil put on us the mark of distinction everything we desire our hands we touch in the name of the lord jesus christ we sanctify this oil in the name of god the father the son and the holy spirit amen so you can just come out touch and go back to your seat you can rise on your feet everybody You can speak word into your life, speak word into your family. For the communion thank you for the anointed oil i stand in my office as a new testament priest and i lift up my scepter of authority i declare that this month of april is going to cooperate with you i declare that as god has brought you into this second quarter that god will go ahead of you and he will make every crooked place straight. Every delay, disappointment you have experienced from January. In this second quarter, the Lord is going to make it easy for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord will bless the works of your hand. The Lord will order your steps. He will guide you. He will bless your water. He will bless your bread. Everything you do this month will prosper. Everything you do in this season will excel. God will raise up men who will speak for you. You will apply and receive job offers you are not qualified for. May the Lord put on you the mark of distinction. As you step out this week, may the Lord take you by the hand and lead you into the place he has prepared for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and your families. The Lord will grant you peace on every side. The month of April is one memorable month the Lord has ushered you into. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you.